The entire Philadelphia sports world, along with the entire world of baseball, shocked and saddened by the tragic death of 40-year-old Roy Halladay. Halliday died in a plane crash off Florida's Gulf Coast while piloting his own plane. He left behind a wife and two sons. As tributes poured in, one theme was constant. People wanted to speak about Roy Halliday, the man, the family man, the person beyond the future Hall of Famer. I'm Michael Barkan, joined now by the voice of the Philadelphia Phillies, Tom McCarthy and Tom New Roy, both on and off the field, chronicled his entire Phillies career. Perhaps the most significant moment, Tommy, was the perfect mm -hmm. moment, May 29th, 2010, in Miami, and you were on the call with Chris Wheeler and Gary Matthews, and we are proud to present an encore broadcast of that game to Phillies fans. Tom, before we get to that game, your thoughts on the devastating news we received on Roy's passing. Well, Michael, like you, you know, you think first about his family. More than anything else, you think about Brandy and his two boys because first and foremost, as he settled into retirement beautifully, uh, he was a father and he was a husband and he was doing all those things at the top of his game. Uh, that's the hardest part about all this. And the fact that he's 40, he was 40 years old and still had so much to give, whether it be with the Phillies organization or with the, the youth program that he was such a part of. Uh, that's the hard part to grasp. You know, I remember when I was a kid when Thurman Munson was killed in a plane crash. Yankee Similar catch. situation. You know, I was, uh, I, was, I, I was 11 years old, and I was not a Yankee fan, but I was a Thurman Munson fan. Things like that are hard to accept for somebody that young. They sure are. One of Roy Halladay's closest friends, former Phillies World Series MVP Cole Hamels, and Hamels expressed the emotions that he and those that knew Roy will feel for quite some time. It's gut-wrenching. Um, you know, you don't really know what you're going to do. You know, you, you do. These, these tragedies do happen, and you don't know what you will do when it, it's somebody that has touched you and, and has affected your life. And it starts, it really, it, it's tough. It doesn't sink in as much. Uh, you know, right off the bat, because uh, you are, you're in shock. Um, but I do know that, you know, as the hours have kind of creeped in, and, and obviously we've gotten, you know, talked to a lot of other players, uh, this is this is tough for us. Um, he had such a tremendous impact on, you know, who we are, you know, the identity that he's helped create, you know, what, who, you know, the Phillies, you know, were, uh, and, and, and are trying to set that precedence. And, you know, we... We're, we're going to have some tough times and, uh, you know, it's, you know, obviously as a whole, you know, all of us coming together, it's it's not the circumstances that you all of a want to start a, you know, group thread text message. I mean, that's, you know, not what, you know, kind of you, you want, you know, it's, uh, but it does show the importance of who he was, you know, Roy and Brandy and, and obviously his two boys, you know, they, they do. They meant the world to all of us. And, and we got to witness some, some great years and great times with him. And he was, he was just starting some great times in retirement with him. And it's just, it's, it's hard to wrap your head around that when you do think of your family and, and what their family's going to go through. It's not only players and teammates that grieve Halliday's passing, but an entire organization an entire city. I was I was sitting in my car and I just couldn't drive any further. I just literally had to stop. I, I was numb, um, and I still am. I think the, what people remember about Roy is what a great human being he was. Uh, great husband, great father, a great friend, and ultimately a great teammate. Uh, but he was a great teammate because he was a great person. He was also a spectacular competitor, um, physically, mentally, and. Uh, he, he really showed everybody here, as Cole talked about it, he raised everybody's expectations, raised everybody's bar, said, you know, you have to imp increase your standards because you, you can even do better than what you've been doing. We just don't have him anymore. You can't lose somebody like that. This, I mean, he was a, one of the heart and souls, not one of, I said, not the only one, but a big one for our great teams in that, that run. Um, so we're very, I mean, we're just, we're shocked. Tom McCarthy to the magic of the moment. Memorial Day weekend 2010. What was it like to not only witness one of the greatest athletic feats one can ever see, 
but to be in the booth as well to call that game. Uh, it was incredible, Michael. I, you know, as a broadcaster, you look for events like this, the atmosphere, the energy. There wasn't a whole lot of atmosphere down in South Florida. They weren't drawing all that well, but when Roy was on the mound, there was always atmosphere, and it was that kind of atmosphere that you expected something special, at least for those first two years he was with the Phillies every single time he came out to the mound. I remember shaking in the seventh and eighth inning. My adrenaline was flowing uh, unbelievably, and you just sat there and thought, just don't screw it up and make sure that you capture the moment as best you can. Well, let's go to Miami as Roy Halladay takes the mound to Tom McCarthy's call. Roy Halladay making his 11th start of the year, Wills. And he still has great numbers, even though he got hit around a little bit uh, in that game by the Boston Red Sox, and they didn't catch the ball real well for him either. About seven runs in five and two thirds, and he fires a fastball for a strike. Southwest Airlines scouting report pitching on that extra day's rest. That's the uh, fastball he throws, along with a lot of other good stuff. Last three starts, numbers not real good. In fact, his last win was the sixth of the month against St. Louis at the ballpark at Citizens Bank Park. Well, and he said they didn't catch the ball real well for him his last time out. They haven't caught the ball real well for him lately. But Roy Halliday said it might have saved me a couple of pitches, the one error by Greg Dobbs last time. But for me, I think the sixth inning was big. To me, that's where the game kind of got out of hand, and that was my fault. And he evens up the count two and two to Chris Coughlin. He said he just didn't execute his pitches in his last outing against the Red Sox, and that's been the case for him. Then he falls behind three and two to Coughlin. Gabby Sanchez waits on deck. On the outside corner, called strike three. Coglin, I think, knew it. He was just hoping that the home plate umpire, Mike DeMuro, would give him a pass. One gone here in the bottom of the first. The pitch looked like he was headed towards the outside corner. That's what he called it. Coglin tosses the bat away because he thinks he has a walk. Carlos did a nice job of freezing that. You know, that pitchers really appreciate catchers sitting nice and still like that. And he even moved a little bit. But it didn't look like it. I right. wouldn't think to the home plate umpire because there's very little movement in his hand there. Mike DeMuro is the home plate umpire. Tim Welke's at first. Jim Reynolds is at second, and Bill Welke's around at third. Mike DeMuro, whose dad was a major league umpire, he was the first umpire in Major League Baseball to up over in Japan. He did that in 1997 just to kind of refine his skills. Swing and a miss and a breaking ball, and it's one and two. Charlie Emanuel felt pretty good after last night's win because of the way the Phillies pulled out the victory and used their legs to help uh, the offense along. And Charlie's had to answer a lot of questions about, about Roy Halladay over the last week or two because of his number of pitches that he's thrown over his last few outings. And Roy Halladay said from the horse's mouth the number of pitches that I've thrown doesn't and didn't affect me. It was a matter of not making good pitches and he was talking more about his last outing against the Red Sox and maybe his outing before. I think the other two times in his career he threw a lot of pitches like that he threw shutouts after them. So you know end of story enough uncle. Reaches out and pops it foul and it remains two balls and two strikes. And a swing and a miss, and Sanchez way out in front of that one. There's another curveball from Halliday, two away. He threw a good breaking ball there, 2 2 to get him. He threw him a good changeup earlier in the count. During the 2010 season, Turkey Hill will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory and five cents for each carton of Phillies Graham Slab ice cream. Sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. The Phillies have 27 wins this year. And as we showed you before, they're a game and a half up in the National League East over the Atlanta Braves, who are facing the the National League East this week or this weekend before the Phillies come into town for a three-game series. 
And a fastball to Ramirez is low. One ball and no strikes. And the Ramirez is hitting 302 with eight home runs. See his splits between home games here in South Florida and games on the road. And a swing and a foul tip. It's two and one. By the way, I said the Braves are facing the East. They're facing the Central. They're facing the Pittsburgh Pirates this weekend. Yeah, as they did last weekend, and they've won three out of four from them. They lost on a walk-off home run the final game of the series in Pittsburgh. Two and one. The count to Ramirez. And now Roy Halladay is falling behind three and one. Oh, three. Oh, uh, quite a few, few pitches falling behind all three hitters so far, which is. Not like him, but he's come back to strike both of them out. First two guys. Oh. The Bureau's got a good plate for the for a, a veteran pitcher, and uh, Johnson may get the same treatment. So the hitters are going to be swinging the bats tonight. The second hitter that's walked away thinking that he's had a walk. Chris Coglin, the leadoff batter, thought he had a walk and he was rung up. Ramirez thought he had a walk and now it's three and two. Toward second base, hit hard, but it skips right on to Chase Utley, who throws over to first, and Roy Halliday has a one, two, three first inning. Easy inning for Halliday, not from a pitch count standpoint, but he works it nothing across. Roy Halliday got the Florida Marlins in order at the bottom of the first inning. And every time the Phillies retire the opposing team in order, Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by the Xfinity Triple Play, your complete lineup for digital TV, high-speed internet, and home phone. See by Halliday uh, mopping sweat off there. It is typical South Florida night, and it's hot and humid. Now, there rain all over the place again before the game. And didn't get here, and hopefully it won't tonight. But one thing's for sure, it's not hard to get loose if you're a pitcher. Josh Johnson has enjoyed his time here in South Florida. See the uh, conditions up above, some clouds in the area. Oh, yeah, it was raining really hard. It looked like about five miles from here. <laughs> Black, and you can see the rain, but it, it just stayed there. That's a good thing. Oh, yeah, very good thing. We had a little rain in last night's game, but it really didn't affect uh, what was going on on the field. They never did take the cover off the tarp. Back toward the mound under the glove of Johnson. And Jason is retired to start the second. And one away, and Raul Ibanez, once he gets the donut off his bat, and will come to the plate. Raul was one for four in last night's ball game, and he had a triple that drove in Ryan Howard for the Phillies' first run in their last 30 innings. To see what he's done against Josh Johnson during his career. I wasn't up here with you guys in that half, but look, Maven looked like Maven took a funny route to that, and the ball skidded. Yeah, the wet turf you know, seemed to cause that ball just to fly right on by him. But I agree with you; he probably didn't go at it. His angle wasn't that great. Well, here it is. So yeah. you decide. Yeah, it's hard to tell at that point where it picks it up where he started, but uh, the ball did hit that wet. And that's a uh, fast turf here anyway. When it hit it, it scooted. It almost looked like AstroTurf. Raul goes the opposite way with that one. That's pretty well hit. Coglin going back has room and makes the catch. Pretty well hit, but it was down toward the end of the bat. Yeah, they were two away. Here's a look at it. Johnson, much like Halliday, has great movement on his pitches. Tom said that hit down near the end of the bat, and he really didn't drive it. Well, that'll bring Juan Castro to the play. Castro played as a defensive replacement in last night's ball game, and he's playing third base tonight. Charlie Manuel was asked before the ball game about Castro playing third tonight instead of Greg Dobbs. He said, "Well, Castro can play third." Said he is a utility man, isn't he? <laughs> and that was the design was to have Castro come in and you know play some short, maybe play some second, and also play some third. 
One thing about when you bring a guy in and call him your utility infielder, he has to be able to do one thing, play shortstop. Because that's the hardest position to play. And they, you take for granted they can play third and second and help you out there. If they can, but they have to be able to play short. And Phillies are very lucky that they have two guys that can do that in Castro and Valdez. Opposite way, that's a fair ball by Castro. Just inside the first base back. And he'll get to second. That's the second double of the night for the Phillies against Johnson. A lot of triples in this ballpark down in that area. Now, Castro doesn't run very well, so he wasn't going to be a guy to get one. But it's 345 down the line with kind of a goofy corner. The ball shoots around that corner, and you will see triples down there. Here's just a, kind of a late swing at a fastball, and zip right inside the bag. Right there, a fair ball. And uh, on it quickly was Cody uh, Cody Ross to get it back in. So a runner in scoring position for the Phillies, their second one of the night. And Carlos Ruiz takes a pitch on the black, and it's 0-1. You can see what they're doing right here. They're not going to walk him and turn the order over here in the second inning because they figure there's a reason a guy's hitting eight. Go get him. Roy Halliday waits on deck. You see what Carlos has done in his last 28 at bats. He's three for his last 28. One thing Carlos was doing when he was going well offensively is walking a lot in this eight hole. Freddy Gonzalez decides not to walk him intentionally. There's a broken back ground ball toward the middle, backhanded by Ugla. One hop throw, not in time. Infield single for Ruiz. Over to third goes Castro. Boy, if that ball could have just snuck on through, the Phillies would have had a run. But Ugly did a nice job getting to that ball. It wasn't it that hard? Right, Ugly's main concern there is to make sure the ball doesn't get through so the run scores. And then he saw he had a chance at an out. So he bounced it over there and almost got Ruiz. Here's a look at it. Ugly's really improved as a second baseman. Makes a real nice play there. Carlos obviously safe. But when it uh, when it went up the middle, you thought, you know, maybe it can trickle through. So Castro leads off third. Ruiz leads off first. Roy Halladay, the batter, and a swing and a miss, and it's 0 1. Roy Halladay's trying to find his way a little bit in the National League offensively, and it's going to be tough. And look out over that first base dugout if he makes contact. <laughs> Four for 33 this year at the plate. And he's behind. No balls and two strikes. This is he hasn't seen cheese like this in the National League so far. I mean, obviously in his career, and I'm sure he's seen guys throw like Johnson, but there aren't many. Right, thinking last time out I saw a knuckleballer. That was a little different. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, well, the Angels have scored four in the bottom of the tenth on a grand slam by Kendry Morales and have defeated the Mariners five to one. Swing and a miss, and Halliday is down on strikes. And Josh Johnson strands another one over at third. He picks up his first strikeout. Philly strand two. We go to the bottom of the second in a scoreless game. Follow the Phils in your iPhone, iPod Touch, Blackberry, and Android phone with MLB.com at bat 2010. Featuring play by play, video highlights, and live audio broadcasts. Visit Phillies.com today in your iPhone, iPod Touch, Android, or Blackberry for more details. Bottom of the second scoreless ball game. Phillies have had some base runners. In fact, they've had a couple of runners over to third. The youngsters not only hoping for a Phillies win, but also a souvenir. They know that the warm-ups are about to end for Roy Halladay, and they're thinking maybe there's a ball coming in from the infielders that somebody will toss up into the stands. Halladay in the first struck out two, but he threw 19 pitches. And now he'll go to work against four, five, and six. Still looking, still looking. Nope, doesn't look like they're going to get one. Not all right, not this time. Keep giving the players those mournful looks. Sooner or later, you might get one. Gonna stand up, show your jersey. Yeah. Jorge Cantu leads it off, and he'll take a breaking ball for a strike. It's 0 1. Cantu's 5 for 15 on this homestand for the Marlins, which included the series against the Braves. And he has seen Roy Halladay before. And in fact, he's three for 17 against him, as you just saw. And he was with the Rays for a number of years, playing in the same division with the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. And he does come into this ball game with a six-game hitting streak. 
see how he doesn't throw many fastballs, at least in this at bat. And that's knowing your knowing your opponent, because Cantu is such a good fastball hitter. That mean you won't throw him one. Well, they're going to go with another breaking ball here. Oh, and just missed off the outside corner. It's three and one. There's a cutter. Came back with a fastball. Yeah, another cutter. The same thing. He uh, he's not throwing anything straight to Cantu so far. So Carlos Ruiz twice put down three, and that must be three for cutter for Halliday. Sometimes three means slider. And a swing and a foul tip into the Glover Ruiz. Third strikeout for Halliday. That was a fastball. So one away here in the bottom of the second. There you go. That's a little four seamer right there. And he throws it by him after all that stuff with a lot of movement. He went up a little bit on Cantu and got him to chase. Halliday comes into this game fifth in the National League and earned run average. His ERA is at 2.18. Josh Johnson. Well, I was right behind Roy Halladay. In fact, he's ninth in the National League and earned run average. The leader is Ubaldo Jimenez at 0 0.88. Halladay does not have real command of his breaking ball. There you see Josh Johnson. You can't help but notice him wiping his hand on his pants a lot and going to the rosin bag because there's just so much moisture here. There he goes again. Almost every pitch he goes and he wipes his hand and he's been back to the rosin bag quite a bit. A curve ball in there for strike two, one and two. Dan Uglis tied for the league lead in home runs with 12. Swing and a miss and another curve. And that is the fourth strikeout for Halliday. Another great fastball hitter in Dan Ugla, and he wasn't going to see them. After the game, get all the highlights from tonight's game, plus expert analysis from former Philly Ricky Metallico on Philly's post game live, presented by Sloan Toyota, right here on Comcast Sportsnet. I would think Ricky is uh, loving this matchup between Josh Johnson and Roy Halliday, particularly when Halliday is delivering like this. Well, it's another curveball. And he threw ugly a couple of them, and they were the best curveballs he's thrown so far. There's Cody Ross, who whacks the first pitch from Halliday to third. Castro throws across the diamond, and Halliday needed that. A one pitch at bat by Cody Ross, two strikeouts and a ground out. He's retired the first six. We go to the third, nothing, nothing. Oh, Wills, your friend Chewbacca's at the ballpark, and that can only mean one thing. It's time for the Dodge Stuff the Fans trivia question. Log on to Phillies.com, go to the Fan Forms section for all the information. And please submit your answer on the subject line. The question is, can you name the athlete who played for a World Series and an NBA championship in the 1950s? Probably not. All right, well, we'll see. We'll find out in the seventh inning. It's got to be hot in that Chewbacca uniform. What's a Chewbacca? Did you ever see Star Wars? No. Sorry. No, it's kind of a cult movie. Not many people okay. saw it. No, I think a lot of people saw it. I <laughs> think I would probably be in the minority. Jay Victorino leads things off. Sorry. On. We will get you the uh, the Star Wars gift pack for Christmas this year. We'll get it in Blu-ray. It would be great with that surround set. I have a feeling I have it at home. Victorino skies it. Left center field. Cameron Maven calls off Chris Coughlin. And there's one out here in the third. Well, if that had been somebody in a Davy Crockett outfit, I'd have known it. Right, and then you would have uh, been in the min minority about that, right. too. I said that was Fess Parker. You know he just died? <laughs> I didn't know he just passed yeah, away. Yes, unfortunately, Fess did. Born on a mountaintop in Tennessee. <laughs> did he die on the mountaintop in Tennessee? I don't know. I can't go that far for you. Probably died in the Hollywood Hills. Probably. Wilson Valdez doubled his first time up. And he takes a fastball in. One ball and no strikes. 
Phillies have two doubles tonight against Josh Johnson who surprisingly went through his entire game last time out without a strikeout. This guy is averaging a strikeout per inning and he didn't have one his last time. That is surprising and he threw 93 pitches without a strikeout. That's hard to do even in an American League park and an American League game the way that he did because he pitched that game Sunday in, in uh, Chicago. And there's his line from that ball game and yes he did get the win as the Marlins defeated the White Sox as Valdez lines one to center and he's going to have his second base hit of the night. Well, speaking of the American League Central, the Cleveland Indians are going to be in Philadelphia Tuesday, June 22nd at 7.05 for a three-game series. Two night games and a day game. See a couple former Phils on that roster, including Lou Marson, Jason Donald. Order your tickets now by logging on to phillies.com. There might have been a time where we would have told you, come see the Indians. You'll see CC Sabathia. <laughs> you'll see Cliff Lee. They have kind of broken that team up that was pretty successful and in the postseason just a few years ago. Chase grounded out his first time up. He's 0 for 1. Over and Valdez back standing. Josh Johnson is one of two Marlins players that the Marlins front office has really locked up for the future and have locked up for their new ballpark in 2012. The first was Hanley Ramirez, and then Johnson this past offseason signed a four year, $39 million contract that is guaranteed. There was a lot of speculation that he would eventually leave the Marlins sooner rather than later but Jeffrey Loria who's the owner of the Marlins who you see right there and his front office staff decided that they needed a foundation to go into that new ballpark and a foundation in their rotation and this guy is a mighty big foundation and he fires a fastball for a strike to chase well he's a true number one pitcher that's for sure and you see winning percentage for Marlins career leaders Josh Johnson not even close right there and he has tremendous numbers here in this ballpark. He's four and with an ERA of one point eight zero in his last six starts here at this ballpark. And that's just the beginning. Freddie Gonzalez had a great quote not only about Josh Johnson but also about Roy Halladay. He said two guys who have a great work ethic. As Chase bounces it foul just foul. Yeah you don't get this good by just showing up. Mm -hmm. You know they obviously both have tremendous talent. There's Freddie. Who Tom's talking about their manager and Roy Halladay. They're gifted with tremendous natural ability. But to do the things they do. And to be as superior as they are, you have to do more than yeah. they do. Well, he went on to say, I don't know if there is a, a thing called an ace mentality, but I know that Josh and Roy Halliday's preparation is second to none. I think you either learn to work hard or born with it. And I think these two guys were born with it. Valdez goes and Utley pulls it foul. Good time to run. He, you know, a lot of that has to do with Davy Lopes and uh, there's. Charlie checking that stopwatch out there. Davey Lopes and Wilson Valdez talking about it. But also with two strikes on that lead, you know, they also think, hey, he may throw something in the dirt here. He may throw a breaking ball of some kind. Uh, you know, and even if Atley strikes out, we'll, we'll be at second with two outs. See, the opposition's been caught five times trying to steal against Johnson. And I think that's partly because they didn't get something soft. They got a real good fastball, and it gave Ronnie Polino mm -hmm. and John Baker and Brett Hayes a good pitch to throw on. Well they just got a throw over you saw the pinky go towards uh, first base They got a throw over after Valdez ran. Valdez doesn't go and Chase takes a fastball wide two and two. Yeah, that's a great pitch for the pitcher to throw and the catcher it's almost like a pitch out if he had gone there and that's the opposite 
of uh, getting the breaking ball. Now, you know, you put in his mind that the guy was going to go, so we don't want to throw a breaking ball there. Something slow, we're going to throw a fastball. So you can do two things by how, by a runner being in motion like that. Valdez doesn't go again, and Chase floats it towards center. Mabin may have misjudged it. He did. It's off his glove, and that's going to go back to the warning track. Valdez speeding around third. He's heading for home. Utley's going to be at third base standing, and the Phillies take a one to nothing lead. Yeah, you could see he was in trouble on that ball, and then it looked like he had recovered because he's so tall, and he did get a lot of leather on it and then kicked it behind him. Or knocked it behind him when he hits it with a glove, which we'll probably see. But Utley fooled him a little bit because he lunges at this. Watch him lunge with one hand, and he's thinking, well, that didn't hit that hard. And then it's like, oh, no. And right there, it clanks off the glove. Watch how much glove that hits. Right there, he almost caught it, and he actually kind of forced it behind him. Now well, they're going to score that a three base error for Cameron Maven. You see a guy take a swing like Utley just hit near the outfielder and it's hit right at you. Your first reaction has to do what he did and that's break in because you see it's like a one handed swing. You think he's dunking it in front of me and I don't want that guy to get to third who's on first base. And then all of a sudden Utley as strong as he is whatever he did with that he got some backspin on it and took off really did carry pretty well and that is the 40th error of the year for the Marlins and no major league team has committed more errors than Florida. It's the second one for Maven. And there's intentional ball four to Ryan Howard. And this inning's still alive. Phillies have runners on first and third. Well, the reason they walk Ryan Howard right there is he's trying to get a strikeout and to prevent a fly ball and figure Josh Johnson's chances of strikeout worth are better than uh, than to strike out Ryan Howard. I mean, that's the only reason why you would do that. And the other reason is you're playing to the opposition's pitcher right now, Roy Halladay. So you, you're doing everything you can not to give up runs. Well, the Marlins will set up a double play depth with runners on first and third and one away for Jason. And he takes a fastball for strike one. Jason came into the game 10th in the league in hitting at 309. But did have an off day yesterday because Charlie just felt like he was lunging a little too much and needed a day just to clear his head. He did eventually come in to play right field. He got one at bat. He's been hitting a lot of fly balls with, along with the strikeouts, and fly ball here would be just fine. One and one the count to Jason. And he lays off a breaking ball, and it's two and one. Well, if they'll hand you two runs and for the guy like Josh Johnson on the mound, you got to get him. And nobody knows that more than Jason Worth right now, trying to grind out this at bat and get that runner in from third. Jason Ryan Howard and Shane Victorino all tied for the team lead in RBIs with 33. Off the outside corner, three and two. This, I, I don't think you run here because Jason Worth isn't a guy who grounds into double plays. He's more likely to strike out into one. Ryan does not have a big lead off first. He doesn't go, and a swing and a miss. Two outs. That is the second strikeout for Johnson. That's just a little cheese right here. Well, and that's why Freddie Gonzalez did what he did. Walking Ryan Howard because he wanted the best chance for a strikeout to prevent a sacrifice fly for that second run. And they got the strikeout on a 95 fastball. Phillies have gotten a run in this inning. As it turns out, it's an unearned run, but they got a run nonetheless. And they've got another runner at third for the third straight inning. And yeah, this inning was the first time they got somebody to third with less than two outs. And now they got him over there with two outs again. No balls, one strike to count to Ibanez. Raul, who is from the Miami area, 
Went to high school here, lives here, went to college here, to Miami Dade. If he wasn't drafted, then he probably would have went to the University of Miami to play some college baseball. And he lays off fastball on the outside corner at 96, and it's one and two. That's a gift. Throw 96 on the corners. <laughs> That's special. And a swing and a miss and a breaking ball. And Ibanez is strikeout victim number three for Josh Johnson. But the Phillies get a break. And a ball hit by Chase Sutley. Off the glove of Cameron Maven. Back to the warning track. And that gives Wilson Valdez plenty of time to score the game's only run. A beautiful sunset here in South Florida. And it is gorgeous right now. And the Phillies lead it 1-0 as we go to the bottom of the third. Roy Halladay will face the bottom third of the order. Brett Hayes, Cameron Maben, and Josh Johnson. Hayes was called up from AAA to replace John Baker, who was put on the disabled list. He was hitting just 220 in the minor leagues with a home run. He is hitting 286 here in the big leagues. And that one's off the end of the bat. A soft pop up right toward Chase Utley. And one out here in the third. You know, it's pretty special to be a major league pitcher, which obviously Roy Halliday and Josh Johnson both are. But to not only be a major league pitcher, but to be a number one on whatever team you play on. And that means that you get a chance to pitch in all the big games. But you also get a chance to pitch a lot of times against the other team's number one pitcher. And Roy Halladay has done that throughout his career. I was watching the other day when they were playing the Mets, and he evidently has been matched up with Santana quite a few times. And that's a one on one. Maven hits it in the air to right center field. Shane Victorito got a late start, but Jason Worth is there, and Victorito crosses behind him to make the catch. Worth just let it go by because he heard Shane calling. Two outs. Usually the bigger of the two outfielders will stay there and make the grab. Whoop. Wow, that was cool. That was clean shaven right there. Two outs for Josh Johnson. Pretty good hitter. Oh yeah, this guy. You know, Roy Halladay, you know, should be able to handle him, but this guy can hit mediocre pitching, that's for sure. He hit some homers. Three home runs in his career. They came in one season. What a dead center in this place. That is deep. Two and other cuts. One of those guys that got to put an elbow pad on it because he's a right handed pitcher. Last year Roy Halladay matched up against the other team's number one a number of times when he faced the Yankees or faced the Red Sox. He would from time to time face Andy Pettit, CC Sabathia for the Yankees, John Lester, Josh Beckett for the Red Sox and he was staggering the number of times he either pitched a complete game or pitched into the eighth inning of those games. And he gets Johnson swinging on strikes for his fifth strikeout. He's faced nine. He's retired all nine so far. We go to the fourth inning here in South Florida. It's the Phils one. The Marlins nothing. Tuesday, July 6th at 7.05, the Phils and the Atlanta Braves will get together as part of a three-game series. And it's also a Charlie Manuel Louisville slugger free defense, 14 and under. Compliments of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 98. Order your tickets now by logging on to phillies.com. Well, Charlie Manuel, that day when he was swinging that bat, he was loving it. Has a signature on the top of it, and he's probably loving what he sees from Roy Halladay so far. His team leads it one nothing as we go to the top of the fourth and the bottom third of this order. We'll see if they can get something cooking again against Josh Johnson. Gary Matthews joins us here in the booth, and Sarge is a player when both teams number ones were scheduled to go at it. What does that mean as a player? Like a left fielder like yourself. Well, you're looking forward to it, to, to say the least, and hoping that you can do something to win the ball game for. It. I guess in a game like this, if you score one run, 
there's a sigh of relief that all right we got you know the extra we got the run first let's see what we can do to tack on a little bit. Well that's what you'd like to do you want to be able to add on and to pick up easy RBIs. they had a situation with Jason Worth up there with less than one out runner on third base you want to make contact Freddie Gonzalez elected to walk Ryan Howard and it paid off for him. Well, one and two, the count to Josh Johnson. We just don't see it that often, Sarge. I mean, we think we do, number one against number one. But as the season goes on, it doesn't really happen that often. No, it really doesn't, except for maybe the first time of the year. But a lot of times, though, when they hook up those number ones, you're excited about it, you're thinking about it. I know when Steve Carlton uh, pitched and maybe we were pitching a, facing a Tom Seaver, you were ready to go. One Castro to center field. Cameron Maven who misjudged one earlier. Was able to make the catch on that one. One away. A solid little contact there. Now he did lose his feet just a little bit, but recovered on that one. That one not carrying as much. Here's Carlos. Carlos had an infield single his first time up, second into the series. And it's two balls and no strikes. I don't know how Steve Carlton was the day of or the day before a start. Uh, yeah, I know he was a very intense individual, but we've said this before as Ruiz drills one to left field, boom, right off the wall. He may get a long single out of that one. If for only the only reason being that he hit it so hard. Well, that ball hit like a bullet off the wall. Right above that, I think right above the zero, the second zero in 2003. Well, that's the kind of sound that you like. Line drives coming off of his back. That ball there hit just like a, a bullet. He's short compact. You hear that sound, and outfield is just going to turn around. Ray Holiday, who does not have a sacrifice bunt this year, tries to sacrifice Ruiz up to second, misses the first pitch. Anyway, if you used to walk by Steve Carlton I'm not sure what he said the day before or the day of games he walked by Roy Halliday and it is tunnel vision the day of a game Yeah, Steve Carlton wasn't a good guy to talk to or ask uh, anything the day he was pitching. Oh and to the count to Halliday and well known I mean uh, if he drops something just keep walking he'll get it himself you know he just don't want to even have eye contact with him. I can put him on that mound and he means business and he had a great chance of winning the ball game. Halliday pulls back. It's one and two. So one and two the count to Josh Johnson. I guess that's okay though Sarge if the, the pitcher is that good if he's that prepared and is looking forward for the task at hand you kind of let him be a little quiet. Well you let him be a little quiet and they're a little more temperamental than most. <laughs> Halliday misses that one and he's down on strikes two outs. So two away with a runner at first and back to the top of the order. And Roy still looking for that first sacrifice bunt. Now Josh Josh Johnson is a little different. He's intense but you know he talks a little bit more on the day of a game. Greg Maddox used to talk all the time on the day of a game. Didn't well, he? Greg Greg uh, well, I didn't really talk a whole lot. John Montefusco the count used to talk all the time. I mean he would actually go to the batting cage when the opposition was hitting and tell him that he was going to strike him out. He did that against the Phillies as a matter of fact. And this was uh, on that team. Greg Lazinski was on the team. Schmidt <laughs> was on the team. All speed pitch for a strike. It's one and one to Victorito is 0 for 2. I find that surprising that a pitcher of the day he would pitch would do that. Oh he, he would. And he'd come in and say, hey guys, all I need is one today. And did that would work at times. I was going to say, did you believe him? Sometimes, yeah. And he said it against the big red machine, and we had to hold on for a 10 9 victory. Because <laughs> <laughs> he needed more than that one run. <laughs> Maybe he bet he only needed a one run lead. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> one ball, one strike, the count to Victorino. And he pops it up. 
almost the same spot that he hit the ball in the first inning. Cantu, though, this time makes the call and makes the catch. Phillies do get a one out base hit by Carlos Ruiz. He's stranded at first. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's one nothing, Phils. Last of the fourth, Phillies lead it one nothing. They've had base runners against Josh Johnson. The same cannot be said for the Florida Marlins, as Roy Halladay has struck out five through the first three innings. And after throwing 19 pitches in the first inning, well, he has thrown just 21 in the last two. And he'll begin against the top of the order, Chris Coughlin. He struck out looking his first time up. And the first pitch is on the outside corner for a strike. It's all in one. Yeah, Roy Holiday talked about hitting his spots and saying it didn't matter how many pitches he threw, he just wasn't hitting his spots in the other game. Towards second base, Chase stays down on it, one away. Email, text, Twitter, and Facebook. 24-7 CSNPhilly.com is your best source for the latest news on Philly's teams. When and where you want it, be the first to know. Text alerts to 53695 or sign up for alerts at CSNPhilly.com. Well, tonight you can not only get your Phillies alerts, but you also can get your Flyers alerts. As game one of the Stanley Cup finals between the Flyers and the Chicago Blackhawks is scheduled for today. Gabby Sanchez pops the first pitch foul just in front of us and out of play. I would think there are a number of Phillies fans slash Flyer fans who will be getting their alerts here at the ballpark. That gentleman. Sanchez struck out swinging his first time up. And the count is even one ball and one strike. Did you happen to get one of the giveaways today? I all? did not get a tambourine. I did see one last night. Towards center field. Victorino moves back a few steps, two away. I have to admit, I, like you, I've seen a number of giveaways over the years. I don't think I've ever seen a tambourine giveaway, Sarge. Well, likewise, um, might be one of the giveaways that we could actually give away, if you will. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> I remember the one time they had those rattlers and they were hitting them both together and making all of that noise? You mean the thunder sticks? Thunder sticks? Yeah. Oh, my. Well, this is as bad as the thunder sticks. And you don't think these folks are going to go home and use these, uh, use the tambourines at any point? Oh, boy. And the Ramirez grounded out his first time up. He's 0 for 1. Well, they certainly come in handy at a ballpark. Well, if you don't like the tambourines and the way they sound or the thunder sticks, then you would not have played very well over in Japan. No. Maybe not. I mean, I just, uh, the tambourines, the, the sticks, I think, were very annoying. Two and one, the count to Ramirez. So, Pride Wills hadn't said anything about these well, he tambourines. Mentioned them. No, no, he mentioned them. I yeah. was going to say that. <laughs> You know he doesn't like noise. <laughs> so, I mean, I know it had to irritate him. So. Well, there's a big concert after the ball game tonight. This is a Super Saturday at the ballpark. Good oh. breaking ball. Two and two, the count to Ramirez. So those tambourines are probably in honor of the concert that will take place. Oh, what a great pitch. Just late break on the cutter. Later the break. Better for the pitcher because it fools the hitter. Pop up, right side, foul territory. Howard is over. Does he have room? And he runs out of room. So two and two, the count. Guy has a ball, a glove, and a tambourine. So your thought is, what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> That's a foul ball into the Phillies bullpen. 
Nobody seemed to be that interested in getting up for it in the Phillies bullpen. Yeah, Longus is not going their way. Gets that foot down. You see how he gets the foot down. And those guys with that high leg kick, they have to get the foot down to be consistent and to make sure that they're driving the ball. If you don't, you'll pop it up the way Victorino's been doing. And a call. Strike three. 93 right at the knees. It's a 1 2 3 fourth inning for Roy Halliday. He is dealing tonight, folks. Six strikeouts for Halliday. He is face 12. He's retired all 12. Wilson Valdez will lead it off in the fifth. Go to the top of the fifth. Wilson Valdez leads it off. He's two for two. He has scored the only run for the Phillies. Sarge, before the ball game, Charlie Emanuel was talking about uh, Wilson Valdez being at the top of the order. And he said, well, you know, he's a 300 hitter in the minor leagues. And then Wilson said, I used to be at the top of the order in the minors. Does it carry over the same concepts? No, because different hitters will hit different places once they get to the major leagues. You'll have guys that might hit third and good hitters that will be a leadoff hit or hit maybe further back in that lineup. But I will say Valdez has been holding his own. I mean, that's not swinging and missing. He's got a little decent idea at the plate, and he squared some balls up. So he's swinging with a lot of confidence, too. No doubt about it. You can hit a guy like this Johnson. You gotta. That will give you really a lot of confidence to hit against other pitchers. You hit the best. The mediocre guys. You think you ought to get maybe two or three hits off of. Valdez is down on strikes. A one away here in the fifth inning. Well, both starting pitchers have been really good tonight. It's just a one nothing game. Yeah, when they're around the plate, that's what's going to happen. You're going to, and this is just paint. Both those guys are doing. We talked about that early in the open here today. Both pitchers around the plate, cutters are throwing. That the two seamer has everybody shaking their head in the ballpark. Well, they got 11 strikeouts between the two. Five hits for the Phillies. None so far for the Marlins. And here's Chase Utley with one out in the fifth. The big difference tonight is the number of pitches that have been thrown by the two starters. Josh Johnson with one out here in the top of the fifth has thrown 81 pitches. Meanwhile, Roy Halladay has thrown just 52 pitches. And you're trying to work the count just to make sure you can get the pitch count up on Johnson. At least 0 for 2, but his last at bat was the ball that glanced off the glove of Cameron Maven in center. That led to the lone run in this game. Now he hit that ball awful hard there to center field and just took off on it. Swing and a miss, and it's two and two. That's a cutter. Throws that ball in. Very good cutter. That's as good as a lot of pitchers. Fastball. Take a look at the line there. There's six base runners between the uh, the five hits that the Phillies have and the one walk. Back toward the middle, behind the bag. Ramirez has got it. He had Utley shaded that way, so it turned out to be an easier play. Yeah, I thought Johnson might have touched that ball there. Just seemed to slow down a little bit. Maybe not. He's throwing hard, throwing a heavy sinker. Now watch this. That ball goes right through, and no, well, he doesn't hit it. Goes through, and Ramirez makes an easy play out of it. Hey, these are the type of pitchers you get the opportunity to score a run or be able to get one. You got to be able to do it some kind of way. Get that bat on the ball. You know, you're facing guys like Drysdale, Gibson, Colfax. You don't get those opportunities very often during the course of the game. Inside and low, two and zero to Ryan Howard. 
I always marvel at why some of these pitchers like Josh Johnson and Roy Halladay why they have trouble in that first inning or the second inning. You know why are those the innings that you might be able to get some runs against them and then they settle in and they're just firing. And especially coming from the bullpen. I mean you're already heated up and warmed up. You know you should be really ready to go but it takes them until maybe that third fourth inning they really start to heat up. Three and one now to Ryan as he lays off the off speed pitch from Johnson. Yeah that's the test for him to be able to hit that outside part of the plate. Especially Ryan now he's moved off the plate now. And that's a tough pitch if it's a fastball away and this is coming in. Just tied him up on that swing not a fluid swing. Johnson varying the speeds on his fastball from 88 to about 96 throwing a two seamer a cutter comes over the top there that 96 which is a straight one the four seamer toward left field Coglin headed back and makes the catch the ball was sinking once it left the bat of Ryan Howard it's a one two three fifth inning for Josh Johnson he's retired five in a row we played four and a half it's the Phillies one the Marlins nothing. Today's great fact about Citizens Bank Park is brought to you by the Green Sense program at Citizens Bank. To offset the carbon footprint created by the team's utility power usage, the Phillies have purchased 20 million kilowatt hours of green power. It's equivalent to the planting of 100,000 trees. With Green Sense at Citizens Bank, it paid 10 cents every time you pay without paper, up to $120 per year. Jorge Cantu leads off the bottom of the fifth. One nothing Phillies. Cantu, one of six strikeouts for Roy Halliday tonight. On the hands towards second. Nice play by Utley to his left, one away. That ball kind of skidded to the left of Chase, and he stayed with it the whole whole time. Yeah, and it is a fast infield, meaning when that ball hits on the turf, it almost acts as if it's astroturf because it speeds up. That's why you saw Chase actually getting over as quick as he could. Take a look at it now. He knows that ball. Not even looking. He's getting over right away. and makes a fine play of it. Here's Dan Ugla. Swing and a miss by Ugla. He struck out his first time up. Well, right now he's just confusing these hitters with what he's throwing. Oh. Got them all off balance. And a lot of the hitters of the day, they guess. So they're trying to guess along with Holiday. Right, Holiday has faced these Marlins three times before. And you see his distribution of outs. An ERA of a little more than three runs per game. A one and one record during those outings. And included in that was the eight inning performance he had against them earlier this season at Citizens Bank Park, which we showed you during the outset of our telecast. Last year with the Blue Jays when he faced the, the Marlins, he lasted only three innings on June 12th because in the fourth he left with a strained groin. And he's falling behind three and two to Ugla. And really pitching Ugla hard inside. Another one of those second basemen in the league that has tremendous power. And he stays alive with that foul ball. Ugla not only is another one of those second basemen, since 2006, he has more home runs than any other second baseman. Just five more than Chase. That's impressive. Towards straightaway center field. Plenty of room out there. Grand Canyon of center fields and two outs now in the fifth. And look at the pitch count comparison. The only real rough inning for Halliday. Well, not only, not the only real rough inning, the only long inning was that first. Well, it makes a big difference, too, though, when your fielders are catching the ball and 
even maybe making that error you got to realize now he Johnson has to throw more pitches to get another hitter out. Well we've seen that in Roy Halladay's last five starts the Phillies as a team and this isn't only when Halladay was in the game but they've committed ten errors in his last five starts. When he's in there I believe it's six when he's out there. Wow. Cody Ross the batter. And it's one ball and one strike to Ross. Well, he is painting that outside part of the plate. And this is after setting up his pitches. Coming inside, moving that batter off the plate, and then being able to paint on the outside part. Coming in again. Right in on the hands. He broke his bat. He got a little squib roller to Ryan Howard, who takes it to the bag himself. Another one, two, three inning for Roy Halliday. Five innings, five, one, two, three innings. We go to the sixth. It's a one run game. Phillies lead at 1-0 as we go to the top of the sixth inning. It'll be Jason Worth, Raul Ibanez, and Juan Castro to start things off against Josh Johnson. Well, we said on paper during the outset of this game that this was a old-fashioned pitcher's duel. Well, it's not only old-fashioned, it is new-fashioned. I mean, it's everything that we anticipated. The Phillies scored their run on an error by the center fielder Cameron Maven. They have five hits against Josh Johnson. Roy Halladay, meanwhile, has... Face 15 batters. He's retired all 15. And he's going to stay hydrated as Jason Worth leads it off in the top of the sixth. And Jason is behind, no balls and one strike. Sarge, you and Milt Thompson are very good friends. You were a hitting coach for a number of years. You, know, you guys talk hitting all the time. When you look at Jason Worth, I mean, what do you see? What do you think Milt's seeing from Jason over the last few games? Well, even on the pitch he just took, you can see he wasn't really having good balance. You know, and again, he likes his hands the way they are. I'd like to see him up a little bit more. And there's the pitch that he's been missing consistently, that fastball that is away. You know, again, when you're hitting, you got to have slow feet, but more importantly, you got to take that shoulder right toward the pitcher. And not come off of it. Swing and a miss, and Jason is struck out for the second time tonight. Six strikeouts for Johnson. So he and Roy Halliday both have six. Well, there's no doubt Milt has watched Jason for these last few years. And you know, like every hitter, you know, you get into ruts, and Jason gets into these little ruts, but he gets himself out of it. Yeah, when you see that though, the ball's away, then he has a swing as if the ball is, is inside. You gotta be going more to especially he's been getting all those pitches away so now you got to be thinking maybe up the middle if you can and to right center. Ibanez is 0 for 2 and on the outside corner with the first pitch and it's 0 and 1 to roll. Side one ball and two strikes. There's that 95 again reaching back. When you throw that ball 95 and you see it up there now for a hitter, you said, okay, let me stay back or let me try and see the ball. And that's when you get that little off speed pitch. And then you're thinking fastball trying to catch up to it. Well, this is a guy in Josh Johnson who has been very comfortable here at this ballpark. Billy the Marlin has seen some very good games from from Johnson during his career. Johnson did not have a very good spring. In fact, his terrible spring carried over to really his first two starts this year. But since those first two starts, his earned run average is 1.70. And when he was asked about those first two starts, he said, I'm not really sure why I was so bad, but I was bad at spring training, so it was kind of a carryover. But he said he used a couple of bullpen sessions with Randy St. Clair, his pitching coach, his new pitching coach, and that kind of got him straightened out, and he's been on the straight and narrow ever since. Randy St. Clair, who was the longtime pitching coach for the Expos and the Nationals, took over from Mark Wiley at the start of this year. And he's been watching Josh Johnson from the other dugout the last few years. And I'm sure watching him from his own dugout is 
a whole lot better than watching watching him from the Nationals dugout. Well, I got to tell you, this guy's an intimidator. Six seven, he stands on the mound, probably two fifty plus, and I mean he is coming at you. Back toward the middle, another base hit for Castro. He has two hits tonight. Wow. Those are solid hits too, right up the middle. Well, Castro has two hits. Ruiz has two hits. And Valdez has two hits. Down and away. One ball and no strikes to Carlos. Carlos reached on an infield single his first time up. Then he went off the wall and left. That was just a long single because he hit it so hard. The fact that he has three hits in the first two games of the series, though, maybe that's a good sign that he's starting to round back into similar form of what he yeah. had the first six weeks of the season. And you can almost tell with the hitter, he drove that ball, good fastball by Johnson. He drove that in the left field. So he had to be able to get around it and see the ball well to, to do that. Well, Carlos, when he swings at those soft off-speed pitches going away, that's when he's having his his problems. But he sits back, sees that ball there. He's pretty quick with the bat. He sounds strange, but that's not the worst thing in the world for him to take a strike there. Oh no, he's smart. He's working the count and making sure he's trying to get that pitch count up. This is the 109th pitch of the night for Josh Johnson. And it's three and one. There's Roy Halladay on deck. Should be a predictable pitch, meaning fastball, but he's got to make sure it's in his location. Where he wants it. And that would probably be middle in. Uh -oh. Looked like the slider or the cutter. Hits it hard on one hop to Ramirez. Flips backhand the second in time to get Castro. The inning is over. Phil Strand one. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. This might be it for Josh Johnson. Roy Halliday, who has not a lot of base runner through the first five innings tonight. He'll face the bottom third for the Marlins as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. It'll be Brett Hayes, Cameron Maben, and then the pitcher spot. And Tim Wood has just started to loosen up in the bullpen for the Marlins. Josh Johnson over 100 pitches through six. Brett Hayes popped out softly to Chase Utley his first time up, 0 for 1. And he takes a breaking ball for strike one. It's 0 and 1. All of his pitches tonight, Sarge, are around the plate. Yeah, he's established that little strike zone, the low and away on the outside part of the plate. That's a foul ball into the seats over the Phillies bullpen. It's 0 and 2. Right, and one of that's what a pitcher should do. I mean, you throw a ball that you think might be questionable, and you're getting that call. Well, you can go back to the well on that. He's established that he's going to call that ball low and away. No two pitch to Hayes. Swing and a miss. He got him on a changeup. Ruiz will fire to first. Another strikeout for Halliday. That's number seven. Well, this has been really impressive tonight. One out in the sixth inning. Now, this looked to be an off-speed pit. Throws it right in the dirt. I think that split that he he throws it did tumble down. Now with one out, here's Maven who fly to center his first time up. 0 for one, and he's showing bunt, and he takes it for a ball. He uh, he's been working on his bunting. There's Josh Johnson. He's going to grab a bat and come in the on deck circle. Well, he's not the worst hitter in the world to have at the plate. If he's going to butt, you mean? No, Josh uh, Johnson. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. He could be better than some of their pinch hitters. Well, three home runs in his short career and driven in 19 runs. 2 0 the count to Maven. 
And a swing and a miss. He swung right over top of that ball. It was moving every which way. It's two and one. Yeah, that's that mechanical swing that they developed on the tee there. That ball away. He didn't even venture to go that way. He just kind of swinging in that area, if you will. He's showing butt again. It's three and one. He was working on his butting with Dave Collins before the ball game. Dave Collins, first base coach, responsible for the bunting, the outfield, and the base run. This guy was a real good base stealer during his career with the Cincinnati Reds. And he could bunt, too. Oh, boy. Towards shortstop. This could be a tough play because of Maven's speed. Valdez hurries in time to get Cameron Maven. 6-3 on the putout, two away. Oh boy, that was a test. But again, we talked about it before. Valdez has a very strong arm. He can go into the hole. Not a big guy at all. He goes into the hole. He's got something to throw with. Two outs for Josh Johnson. Tim Wood has sat down in the bullpen for the Marlins. Johnson struck out his first time up, and he takes a fastball for a strike. And it's 0 and 1. See, that's what I'm talking about. And there's Valdez in that arm of his, and he did get him. In the air to left field, right at Raul Ibanez. He's under it, makes the catch. Roy Halliday has faced 18. He's retired all 18 tonight here at Sun Life Stadium. The Phillies will take a 1 0 lead into the seventh inning. You're watching a perfect holiday, remembering Roy on NBC Sports Philadelphia, Michael Barkan and Tom McCarthy looking back with you on Roy Halliday's night of perfection. And Tom, no one would have imagined less than eight years later that he'd be gone. No, that's the incredible thing, Michael. I mean, we talk about, you know, this 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 player being larger than life, any athlete larger than life. You know, he he went to work one day and he went out to enjoy, you know, his passion in post playing days. Uh, and nobody would ever expect anything like this would happen. Yeah. I mean, it's just incredible. It, it's, it's stunning. It's, uh, the Phillies put out a statement for everybody to see, and uh, we'll take a look at what they say about the passing of Roy Halladay. We are numb over the very tragic news about Roy Halladay's untimely death. There are no words to describe the sadness that the entire Phillies family is feeling over the loss of one of the most respected human beings to ever play the game. It is with the heaviest of hearts that we pass along our condolences to Brandy, Ryan, and Braden. That from the Philadelphia Phillies. And sentiments such as that poured in from all over social media. Chase Utley, my heart hurts writing this. I can still remember the first day we met. It was 5.45 a.m. on the first day of spring training when I arrived. He was finishing his breakfast, but his clothes were soaking wet. I asked him if it was raining when he got in. He laughed and said, no, I just finished my workout. I knew right then he was the real deal. Thank you, Roy, for allowing us to witness what it takes to be the best. We will all miss you. That's from Chase Utley. This from Charlie Manuel, the skipper. I'm stunned to silence over the news of Roy Halliday. My thoughts and heart are with Brandy and the boys. Rest in peace, my friend, Charlie Manuel. Shane Victorino, gone too soon, my friend. Blessed to have shared the field with you as a teammate, competitor, friend, and more importantly, a brother. Praying for Brandy, Ryan, and Braden. And from the Baseball Hall of Fame. Oh which is where he will no end question. up very soon. Roy Halladay's cap and ball from his 2010 perfect game. His legacy lives on in Cooperstown. Rest in peace, Doc. That's from the Baseball Hall of Fame. From country music performer Kenny Chesney, superstar. I lost a great friend today. All love, Roy. I remember when he was in spring training, when he uh, when he met not only uh, the other Phillies players, but Roy brought him in. It was an incredible day in spring training when Kenny Chesney was there. Mm -hmm. There they are. And it looks like Roy never missed a show. Hmm. So that's from, from Kenny Chesney on Twitter. And from Brad Lidge. And the two were, were high school friends and competitors. Forget about that. It was It's incredible to think about how long they've known each other. Heartbroken. Roy was always the guy I looked up to in Little League, in high school, in the bigs. So lucky to have been his teammate. Incredible husband, incredible dad. We will miss you, Doc. From the closer, Brad Lidge. From Ryan Howard. 
Such a sad day. We lost a great ball player, but an even better human being. Many prayers to Brandy, Ryan, and Braden. We will miss you, Roy. And sentiment such as that poured out from all over the internet. Well, I, I thought his teammates, his former teammates, uh, did an unbelievable job over the last uh, several days talking about this. I mean, it was just incredible to see what they were able to, to put forth in, in, his, in, in his memory. Well, Tommy, you were there, the voice of the second perfect game in Philly's history. Reflect on that awesome accomplishment. Well, Michael, the one thing that I, I was thinking about uh, after Roy's passing is that Josh Johnson was the starting pitcher for the Marlins. I mean, this was a legitimate pitcher's duel. He went seven innings. He struck out seven. He only allowed a handful of hits. Uh, he allowed just the one run. It was an incredible pace to this ball game. Uh, that, to me, was what, I mean, it was a one nothing game. This wasn't 10 nothing. This wasn't 11 nothing. This wasn't 10 6 or anything like that. I mean, this was a one nothing perfect game. I mean, it's just incredible to think that the one run the Phillies scored was all they needed uh, because of the way Doc pitched that night. When did you get the sense that this is where it was going to end up? Well, I, I thought after the fifth inning, uh, I mean, he obviously has had stuff like that a lot that year, and he had stuff like that as the season moved on. I thought after the fifth inning uh, that there was a chance that he could do something special. After the seventh inning, 21 straight outs, that's when you really got an idea of, all right, he's going to face some pinch hitters in the ninth inning when we get there, and he did. Uh, you thought at that point that there was a legitimate, legitimate chance that he would either have a no-hitter or possibly a perfect game. It wasn't until the last out. I mean, that ninth inning, there were some tenuous plays, including the last one that Castro made. Yeah, uh, and, and speaking of Castro, Castro, Wilson Valdez, yeah. this was not the ordinary yeah. Phillies lineup from 2010. Yeah, and Castro made some really good plays. He made two really good plays in the back end of that ball game that stood out that helped Roy uh, keep perfection. All right. Uh, we go back to the game once again, back to Miami, Florida, to take a look as Roy Halladay closes in on perfection. Well, time now for the Verizon Wireless Game Summer here from Sun Life Stadium. It's a smoking hot night, and then you see Valdez scored on that three-base error by Cameron Maben. Josh Johnson is still in the ball game. Roy Halladay can't get any better, and he's been here tonight. And you see Valdez, Castro, and Ruiz. That's what you would expect. <laughs> you know, when you wrote that lineup out tonight, did Charlie Manuel. But you get six hits from those guys. Well, Halliday will lead it off here in the seventh inning. And as Will said, Josh Johnson remains out there. Johnson thrown 110 pitches. And his first pitch here in the top of the seventh is a fastball inside, 1-0. Okay, oh. Halliday to this point, 74. 74 pitches so far. He has struck out seven batters. Halliday has. Well, you could see he was really good early in the game. He, he ran some deep counts, but he had great stuff right out of the shoot tonight. Down and away. Two and one the count. Josh Johnson, the most pitches he's thrown in a game this year is 117. This is a guy who is coming off Tommy John surgery a couple of years ago. And yeah, they're extending him tonight, although they do have Tankersley up now, the left hander. Chopper right side. Gabby Sanchez has it. Johnson covers, and Halliday's retired. Time now for our Coors Light freeze cam. The Phillies have one run tonight, and that one run scored in the third on this ball hit by Chase Utley. Cameron Maven misjudged it, and that is what happened initially, and he couldn't hang on, and it rolled all the way back to the warning track, and Wilson Valdez scored. Well, that was a great shot on that freeze cam. Sure was. See how that thing was right in the webbing of the glove when, when he went to squeeze it or whatever happened. Maybe it, he was bouncing, his feet were bouncing, and it just went right out of the glove. Jane Victorino takes the first pitch from Johnson inside. It's 1-0. There is Taylor Tankersley. Who pitched in last night's ball game? And he's the left-hander out of the pen now. Pinto is on the DL because you used to see him a lot. Looks like they're giving him two more batters for sure. The, uh, you know, you have a right-handed hitter on deck in Valdez, even though he's hitting tonight. Then the left-handers come along.
mention that Josh Johnson is coming off Tommy John surgery as Victorino holds a swing according to the third base up by Bill Welke. You know, since he had that Tommy John surgery and recouped and came back, he is 27 and 7. Yeah, even better. That one's hit hard. A base hit for Victorino. And a good hitter's count. And he was able to drill it into right for a one out single. And Wilson Valdez is the batter. You know, the thing about Johnson, he's thrown 120. This will be 121 pitches. But he is still in the mid 90s with his fastball. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, he's a big time pitcher. We talked about what a horse he is. But you figure this is it. With uh, with the left-handed hitters coming in, Utley and Howard, and the left-handed attackers lead up, this is the last hitter you, I would imagine. Valdez is two for three, and a chopper back toward the middle could be two. Ugla steps on the bag, an easy double play. Josh Johnson faces just this one last batter and gets a double play ball, so he's through seven. It's time to stretch here at Sun Life Stadium, a one-nothing game with Roy Halladay having the lead. Time now for the Dodge Stuff the Fans Trivia Quiz Answer. Wheels, can you name the athlete who played for a World Series and an NBA championship in the 1950s? No, I, but I, I got a few texts from friends, so I'm going to throw one of theirs out there. Gene Conley. Gene Conley would be correct. Wow. 57 Braves, 58-59 Celtics. I just want you to know I didn't know that. But nice Gene to have Conley. friends, though. Wheels. Yeah, Gene Conley did pitch for the Phillies, of course. There you see with the Milwaukee Braves and the Boston Celtics, and he pitched for the Phillies for several years. Chris Coghlan leads it off here in the bottom of the seventh inning. The and Phillies had another NBA player pitch for them. Of course, he did a great job, and that was Ron Reed. Ron Reed. Gene Conley won 91 games during his career. He was tall. He stood six foot eight, 225 pounds. Oh, yeah, he's a big pitcher. 2-1 to Coglin, waved at and missed. It's two and two. Coglin is 0 for two. He has struck out and he's grounded out. 59 and 1960 in the Phillies unit. Won eight games in 1960 with the Phillies. Two and two, the count to Coglin. On the outside corner, called strike three. Coughlin didn't like that pitch in the first inning, and he doesn't like it here in the seventh inning. But it's his, the eighth strikeout for Halliday. You can see Demure had a big plate from the beginning of this game tonight, and that could be good for two tremendous pitchers like are out there, and Josh Johnson and, and Roy Halliday. And as Tom said, the first inning, he had that same fastball called for a strike on the outside corner. He didn't agree with it then. He doesn't agree with it now, but he's gone twice. Eight strikeouts for Halliday. Gabby Sanchez takes a hook inside. It's 1 0. Sanchez is 0 for 2. We've been saying that a lot tonight. 0 for this, 0 for that. He has struck out and he's popped out. Toward third base, a foul ball. Pop up to the right of home plate. It looks playable for the time being. Ruiz trying to track it and it's back into the seats. And it's one and two. Hey, a great item for all Phillies fans. It's called Phillies, an extraordinary tradition. It's a hardcover coffee table book. It's a definitive pictorial history of the Phillies, featuring over 400 photos plus rare pieces of memorabilia and original essays from Phillies stars past and present. Call 877-GO-PHIL, stop by the Majestic Clubhouse store, or get it online in the fan section at phillies.com. The one-two pitch to Sanchez. Again, hit foul. Sanchez is riding a five-game hitting streak after getting a hit in four at-bats last night. Josh Johnson went seven innings tonight or has gone seven. He's allowed seven hits and one unearned run. It's been outdueled by Roy Halladay. 
And it's three and two to Gabby Sanchez. This play Hensley, pretty good right handed pitcher, who's loosening up to the pen for the Marlins. Josh Johnson, who said before the ball game, I think the key tonight is to not change anything that you're supposed to do. Toward left field. Pretty well hit, but playable for Ibanez. Two outs here in the seventh inning. Somebody just threw a 3 2 curveball in this situation. Well, what did he say? The first <laughs> start that he made? Right. That he throws his curve. It's his jam pitch. And it's a jam and surprise pitch. And you want to see a hitter who was surprised? Watch this. Watch Gabby Sanchez kind of double pump on this. Like, oh, that's going to be a strike. I got to swing at it. And so he got nothing but nothing behind it and just hit a weak fly ball to left field and that was a strike right down the middle with a tremendous curveball. Hanley Ramirez is 0 for 2. He's grounded a second that he has struck out looking. Halliday has struck out eight. He's mixed in ground ball outs strikeouts and fly outs tonight. And he delivers a fastball for strike one to Ramirez. Put a little extra on that one. 95. And it's one and one. That changeup makes it two balls and one strike to Ramirez. Ramirez, who last year led the league in hitting at 342. Him going that rosin bag, and I was talking about in the first three innings how much he's wiping his hand and going that rosin bag because it is so hot and humid here. After the last couple of outings, though, he probably likes this warm, mm -hmm. these warm temperatures. Inside, three and one. He has had a handful of three ball counts tonight, not as many lately as he had in the first inning. As Cantu waits on deck. In fact, he's had six three ball counts, but half of them were in the first inning. Or two of the three were in the first, uh, two of the six were in the first inning. 3 1 pitch to Ramirez. And he hits it foul. It's 3 and 2. That was ball four. And he got Ramirez to chase the sinker, it looked like. See, this pitch is going to be low. Well, you know, from it's it's hard to tell to see from the side angle sometimes pitches that look low from the center field camera are knee high. That was close. On the inside corner, called strike three, nine strikeouts for Roy Halliday. He has stunned one Marlins hitter after another. He has faced 21 batters tonight. He has retired all 21. This is number 21. Halliday takes a no hitter into the eighth inning. Well, the breezes are blowing outside Sun Life Stadium. And the ball is moving every which way for that guy, Doc Holliday. He has a 1 0 lead as we go to the top of the eighth inning, and there's nobody getting near him in the dugout. <laughs> They don't really talk to him too much on a normal day, but this is not a normal day for Roy Halladay. He has been as good as you can be with nine strikeouts over seven innings. And Clay Hensley takes over for Josh Johnson, who was equally as impressive in his own way through seven for the Marlins. Yeah, when you look at the uh, Phillies team that couldn't score runs, not able to get them in any which way, they got a gift run here tonight to lead one nothing. Chase Utley, he was the one who hit the ball that led to the gift for the Phillies back in the, the third. It was a ball off the glove of Cameron Maven that scored Wilson Valdez with the game's only run. Chase is 0 for 3. And Hensley delivers a strike and it's one ball and one strike. The Hensley we're talking about is Clay Hensley the former San Diego Padre. Remember he was with the Padres he was a sinker ball pitcher. Kind of came three quarters when he was with the Padres not as much anymore. And that one's hit into center field. That's pretty well hit. Maven going back has room. Oh, there's so much room out there. We said that about City Field. This is equally as deep at this ballpark. And one out, especially in that area.
Runs and hits have been tough to come by. Billy scored that unearned run back in the third. That's when Ryan Howard was intentionally walked after the ball that Utley hit. 0 for 2 officially. And he lays off a breaking ball and it's 1 and 0. Year in and year out, the Marlins bullpen is changed. They tinker with it. I mean, every team does, but probably more than any other team. Part of that has to do with where they want to keep the salaries. The other part of it is that they generally have young players that they mix in with veterans like Hensley. And Jeffrey Loria, whose team is going to move into a brand new facility in 2012. You know, may not have to worry about that as much in the future. But for now, he's got to maintain a certain payroll, which is, you know, rising from time to time, or from year to year, I should say. But guys like Hensley and Kiko Calero last year and Dan Meyer, you know, they're brought in to compliment Hanley Ramirez and guys like that. Well, they've come up with a closer now in Nunez. That one's hit hard, but foul by Ryan Howard. But it's two and two. They were competitive their first year in the league as an expansion team because they had Brian Harvey. And, uh, you know, not that they won a ton of games, but they were in a lot of games. And when Brian Harvey, when they had a lead, he shut you down. So he was a veteran guy that came over from the Angels, I think it was. Well, the gentleman you saw next to Jeffrey Loria sitting in the stands is Michael Hill, who's their general manager. There's Michael. And it's his responsibility, along with Larry Beinfest, who's the Marlins president, to, you know, make sure that this team is competitive, but with not a very high salary. And Howard is down on the strikes. Two outs. So two away, and that'll bring Jason Worth to the play. Jason's hitless in three at bats, a ground out, and a couple strikeouts. There has not been a stretch where Jason has struggled as much as this stretch that he's in right now. Humbling it, game. Yeah, and it's only been nine games, but it does, you know, it does, as Will said, humble you. That ball has hit high in the air to left center, not deep, and Coglin makes the catch, and the Phillies go down in order here in the eighth inning. One, two, three, go the Phils. We played seven and a half. We head on to the bottom of the eighth, and Roy Halliday heads back to the mound. Bottom of the eighth inning, Phillies lead it one to nothing. Roy Halliday will face four, five, and six for the Marlins. It's Jorge Cantu to lead it off for Florida. Cantu is 0 for 2. He has struck out and he's grounded out. Oh, man. He just gets out of the way of that one. It's 2 and 0. Oh. That ball was not only coming at 92, but it was moving. Yeah, with those blousey uniforms, that looked like I had a chance to nip him. He tops it. And Halliday's got a strike, two and one. Roy has struck out nine so far in this game through the first seven innings. Hit hard toward third, flagged down on one hop by Castro. The throw is in time to get Cantu one out here in the eighth inning. Boy, Halliday walked right off the mound towards Castro and gave him a nice going. Charlie Manuel was asked today about Castro playing third. Well, this is one of the big reasons why he, he decided to put Castro at third. Here's our home defensive, home depot defensive play of the game. That ball was smoked on one hop, and he makes a tremendous play. Home Depot defensive play of the game. The Home Depot doing more on defense. Dan Ugla has struck out, and he's fly to center. I have an umbrella over the eight on the fly ball to center, but nothing has really been that deep tonight against Halliday. 
And he takes one at the knees for a strike. It's one and one. The pace of this game with Halliday and Johnson has been unbelievable. And Roy is just getting the ball and getting on the rubber and firing. And he just misses with a curve, and it's two and one. How do you answer all the questions about the number of pitches you've thrown in the last few starts? Well, if Charlie Manuel had a way to answer it, this is a perfect way to answer it tonight because he has thrown a lot of strikes, and it's even two and two to Ugla. Ugla goes down looking. That was a strike, too. That ball came running back. The last time the Phillies had a no hitter, it was Kevin Millwood at the vet against the Giants on the 27th of April, 2003. And it was Ricky Ledeo who made a couple really good catches to help preserve the no hitter. That was Marquise Grissom. Hit those balls, too. And there it is, the final out. A big hug from Jim Tomey. Two big guys right there enjoying what was a beautiful day at the ballpark. Cody Ross the hitter. And he pops the first pitch up foul into the seats. 0-1. Ross hit one to Castro at third back in the second inning. Hit one softly to Howard at first. And he pops it up. Shallow left field. Valdez pointed and then he settles under it and he makes the catch. Halliday has faced 24 batters tonight. He has retired all 24. It's an unbelievable performance that's brewing here in South Florida. We have completed eight in Miami. It's the Phillies one, the Marlins nothing. It has been a hard night's work for Roy Halladay. He is through eight innings. He is not allowed a base runner. We go to the top of the ninth inning. The Phillies lead it one to nothing. This man has been on the precipice of history during the course of his career, and he has spun an unbelievable outing tonight. Very few have gotten near him in the dugout. Very few go near him anyway, but look at that line. Ten strikeouts over eight innings, no hits, no walks. And as we go to the top of the ninth inning, Leo Nunez is on for the Marlins, and Raul Ibanez leads it off for the Phillies. Yeah, and the reality of the game, besides all this unbelievable stuff going on with Howdy, it's one nothing. One nothing. So they're going to use Nunez here to keep it to a one-run game. Very good point. Try and keep it to a one-run game at home. This is some game. We, you know, we started it as a pretty good matchup here tonight. Not, these two right-handers. It's we, not been bad. And we always say when we have these kind of matchups, well, on paper it's yeah. this, on paper on that. Very few times well, does it turn out to be like this. It's been pretty good. Yep. Josh Johnson, the starter for the Marlins, went the first seven. Clay Hensley pitched the eighth. And now Nunez here in the ninth inning. The man is a thinker. And you wonder what he's thinking about right now. You know what he's probably thinking about? Brett Hayes, Cameron Maven, and a pinch hitter in the bottom of the ninth inning. He's thinking about winning a game, too. Yep. 3 0. He got the green light, and he rolls it right inside the first base bag, one away. Sanchez takes care of Ibanez. You think about a hitter off their bench. They have one left-handed batter, and that's Mike Lamb. So, you know, there's a pretty good chance we're going to see him in the ninth inning. Yeah, you know, they have one of the game's better pinch hitters in Wes Helms, but he's a right-handed hitter. Mm -hmm. Here's Castro, who has two hits tonight. He's two for three. He doubled back in the second, flied out to center in the fourth, and singled in the sixth. And he hits it in the air to right. Pretty deep, but it's playable for Ross. There's no man's land out there in right. Two away in the ninth.
Carlos Ruiz has two hits. He is an infield single and he drilled one to left back in the fourth and he's also bounced into a fielder's choice. Phillies lead the division by a game and a half over the Atlanta Braves who are leading their ball game against the Pirates. The Marlins are the bottom team four games out. Roy Halladay waiting on deck and Carlos takes a fastball for a strike it's 0 and 1. Leo Nunez has had a good year for the Marlins an ERA of 2.21. He has a very good fastball and a really good changeup. And he's ahead 0-2 to Ruiz. They got him in a deal for Mike Jacobs from the Kansas City Royals, and what a fine he became. Speaking of fines. Yeah, well, he was uh, he was kind of guaranteed. Yeah, he was. <laughs> He's been pretty good before he got in this unit. Stays alive. He wasn't sure whether to swing, whether to stop, or then swing again. You know, give Chooch a lot of credit here tonight too, the way he's handled Roy Halladay. You know, watching it, you know, you don't always know when they're shaking off because sometimes guys will stare in when they want another pitch. They won't necessarily shake or do something with their glove, or they'll just keep looking in there. But they have been in a very, very good rhythm tonight. Absolutely. Again, he fouls it off. There remains no balls and two strikes. Let's face it, it's important whenever a pitcher puts together the night that Roy Halladay has put together, you know, that the defense plays sound behind him and he's gotten some good defensive plays. There was one by Chase Utley earlier in the game to his left on a ball that just kept on scooting to his left that he tracked down. The play by Castro over third, but then you know, sometimes you see all those highlights of. The sound defense behind him, you kind of forget about the catcher. Yeah, that's why I wanted to bring that up about him. What a good job he's done tonight. It's also given him a few extra moments to catch his breath in the on deck circle with these foul balls. Pitchers and catchers, there's a rhythm involved, in, and especially with a veteran guy, this guy, Moyer tomorrow, they don't want to be out there shaking off. You know, they have a game plan, they go over with a catcher and the pitching coach before the game, there's Jamie. And they want to execute it. Towards second base, softly hit. Uglas got it. Throws to first. The inning is over. One, two, three, go the Phillies. Here in the top of the ninth inning, Carlos Ruiz will take the slow stroll back to the dugout. The Phillies as a team will start to settle down into their positions as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Roy Halladay has a one nothing lead. He has faced 24 batters so far and he will go back to work without allowing a base runner. And let's see how he's gotten to this point so far wheels. Well, he came right out of the shoot with great stuff here tonight with strikeouts in the first inning. Here's Coglin. He thought his pitch is outside. It's right on the corner. He threw the bat away. Eventually struck out. There's another strikeout. He has 10 of them so far. He got Cantu. There's one on Ugly. He's pitched very well with off speed stuff. He's gotten Hanley Ramirez twice called. Now, here we go into the sixth inning. Brett Hayes tops one in front of the plate. And then here's this ground ball that is a very close play at first, but a good play by Valdez. Now, here we go to the seventh inning. Strikeout again on Coglin away. Here's a fly ball on Sanchez on a 3-2 curveball. And then Ramirez again locked on a 3-2 fastball in the inside corner. We go to the eighth inning. Tremendous play here by Juan Castro. Circle that baby. And then he strikes out ugly again looking on a fastball that tailed back over the plate. And then that pitch right there is popped up by Cody Ross to Juan Castro who squeezes it. And that's a pretty good inning. How about the splits for Roy Halladay? Seven ground outs. Seven flyouts and ten strikeouts. 
Bottom of the ninth inning here at Sun Life Stadium in South Florida. The Phillies with an unearned run in the top of the third lead it one to nothing. Roy Halladay has faced 24 batters tonight. He's retired all 24. He has had a handful of three ball counts and a handful of three two counts tonight. But he has been around the plate and when he's needed a strikeout, he's gotten a strikeout. Now the last no hitter here in South Florida was from tomorrow's starting pitcher, Anibal Sanchez, September 6th, 2006. And who can forget the ground ball to shortstop that finished it off and how long it took for this throw to get over to first. And the no hitter was complete by Sanchez. Here's Mike Lamb coming up right out of the shoot. Mike Lamb will pinch hit for Brett Hayes to lead off the bottom of the ninth. And a breaking ball, a little low, and it's one ball and no strikes. Lamb, who was just recalled from the minor leagues just a couple days ago, hits one hard but foul, and it's one and one. Overall, he's batting 211 with no homers and three RBIs. And he's had 14 at bats against Halliday for his career. Two hits during that time. What a night for Philadelphia. You got the Flyers and the Blackhawks playing in the Stanley Cup Finals. And you got Roy Halladay twirling a masterpiece down here in Miami. Quiet bullpen. One nothing game. In the air to center field. Pretty deep. Victorino on the run toward the warning track. Roy Halliday is two outs away. That's using the ballpark because this place is huge. And he put it, kept it in the middle of the field, and Shane ran it down. That was a deep fly ball. The last perfect game in Philly's history. Who could forget Jim Bunning at Shea Stadium? Father's Day. Got Johnny Stevenson for the last out on a swing and a miss on a breaking ball. There it was. That was a heck of a pitch right there. You talk about movement. There was a whole lot of movement right there. Well, Buns had a pretty good breaking ball. <laughs> I shouldn't call him that. He's a senator. Now. <laughs> but he wouldn't mind. Mr. Senator had a pretty good breaking pitch that night. <laughs> Halliday just standing on the mound. There's Cookie Rojas. Where was he when that perfect game was thrown? Well, he was playing shortstop and played a little left field that day. He was one for three behind Jim Bunning. Yeah, Wino came in that game. Bobby Wine played short, and Tony Taylor was the second baseman. Wes Helms will pinch hit with one out here in the ninth inning. Maven was up at the plate and they called him back. And Helms takes one at the knees for a strike. It's 0-1. Josh Johnson went seven for the Marlins. He allowed an unearned run. He struck out six. Roy Halladay hasn't needed any help tonight. Swing and a foul tip. It's 0-2. So many folks say he's not a strikeout pitcher. Well, he's got 10 tonight. <laughs> it's a great shot of the bench. Ooh. And it just missed. They're guarding the line at third. Here comes the one-two pitch to Helms. On the inside corner, strikeout. And Halliday is one out away from completing a perfect game. Wow. It's going to be Ronnie Paulino. Three straight pinch hitters. Boy, he is just painting. Well, he, that's the way he's been all night. You know, he had a home plate on Pirates at corners on the plate tonight, and he's taking advantage of it. Polito, a five-game hitting streak. Swings at the first pitch, and it's no balls and one strike. Charlie Manuel hasn't moved in quite some time, nor is Rich Doobie. One and one the count to Polino. Earlier this week, Charlie was moving every which way in that dugout, trying to change his team's luck. He doesn't want to change anything tonight. One and two the count. 
changeup. So the wiggle of the fingers from Carlos Ruiz. Paulino down on the count, one ball and two strikes. Those tambourines are coming in handy. Halliday's got his signs. The one two pitch. Hit toward third. Castro has it. Spins, fires. A perfect game. Roy Halliday has thrown the second perfect game in Philadelphia Phillies history. He faces 27 batters. He retires all 27. It's the 20th perfect game in baseball history and the second one this year. <laughs> he finally smiles for this. Cool. Boy, this is a throw. That man has seen so much during his career. These fans, well, they probably believe from the fourth inning on. What a night here in South Florida as Roy Halladay <laughs> has thrown a perfect game. He didn't crack a smile all night long. He can crack as many smiles and as many bottles of champagne as he wants to now. Mm. What a thrill to watch that. Huh? Unbelievable. Well, you know, come to a Major League Baseball game, you tell people that you never know what could happen when you show up, and tonight you thought you might see a pretty good pitching performance. Oh. A perfecto in a Phillies uni. Wow. They call it Super Saturday here at South Florida. <laughs> well, when they called it that, I'm not sure if they expected this. Look, they may be going out to try and get the pitching rubber right now. I see Frank Kopenbarger out there talking to the uh, uh, to the uh, ground crew, and they may be asking for it. Here, here's the final out. Looks like a cutter away. Castro, and here's Halliday. Yeah, <laughs> that's about as emotional as he gets. Huh? Oh boy, oh boy. How about Carlos Ruiz? We'll set it. What a night for Carlos. You don't think he's taking pride in this? A perfect game. Unbelievable. Yeah, here it is again off the end of the bat. It wasn't hit real hard, but he knows he has a lot of time, does Castro, because the catcher's running. And he took his time and made sure he made the right throw. And, you know, now they're going to have a concert here, and the lights are going off in this place, but. Unbelievable night. Tommy. Well, let's go down quickly to Sarge who's with Roy Halliday. Sarge take it away. Hey guys. Thanks a lot Roy 27 batters 27 out. Tell us a little bit about it. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, you know it, we felt like we got in a groove early and uh, you know about the fifth or sixth. I was just following Chooch. Um, you know I can't say enough about the job he did today mixed pitches. Uh, you know for me it was really a no brainer. It was you know once we got to the six fifth or sixth I just followed him yeah, a lot of times when you come from the bullpen a lot of times especially number ones they don't seem to be ready and that's when teams take advantage of them but you seem to have good stuff right away yeah we um, you know talking to Jamie and some other guys had some things that I wanted to work on and uh, you know I felt good with it I felt like uh, you know early in my bullpen I was hitting spots more than uh, I had been so you know I felt like I just carried that out there last question how about all the Philly fans here standing up coming in that ninth inning did you feel it yeah it's uh, it was awesome I don't know what else to say <laughs> right thank you all right guys back up to you all right Sarge thank you very much boy we could say we're privileged to have seen a lot of things over the last handful of years a World Series championship two straight World Series appearances but man, are we privileged to watch what we saw tonight? We've got 40 years watching games. I've never seen a perfect game in person. I've seen no hitters. Never saw a perfect game. It's great. Well, let's take a little look at this final out. Look at the way that ball was moving right at the end. The reaction by Roy Halladay. Yeah, it looked like a little cutter that he threw in there. And he just trickled it off the end of the bat. When that was first hit, you thought, uh oh, that's in to the, the hole. hole. Yeah, I thought but the same thing. But then you realize <laughs> it didn't have much juice behind it. And Juan was right there to cut it off because that ball was in the hole. But you know, and it was really neat the way he talked about Chooch there and the way they worked together because it, it became pretty obvious that game was going on. They were, it wasn't shaking them off. It no. didn't seem like they were just working great together. Well, what a gift for this ball club. What a gift for that guy. What a gift for all Phillies fans.
And so we have perfection. <laughs> Just the second perfect game in the history of the Philadelphia Phillies. And Tom, as you're watching the scene on the field unfold, what's going through your mind? Well, my, my first thought and when I think back to it is this is a guy that strived for perfection every single time he went to the mound, every single pitch he threw. And for one night, he reached it. And, and that to me is incredible because 20 perfect games up until that point, and he would be the perfect person to throw one of those perfect games. And just the sense of relief on his face, the affection for Carlos Ruiz, and the affection he had for Carlos all the time, but the affection for Carlos Ruiz was the first person he looked for. After Ryan Howard caught that throw from Juan Castro, that was the first person he looked for. The embrace, and even the 24 hours afterward, and the weeks after that when he, re when he received the slab, the pitcher slab, uh, it, it was incredible. But to me, it's perfection. And he strived for it so often when he was out on the mound and in everything he did. Uh, and for one night, on a hot night, Memorial Day weekend, uh, he was able to reach it. Almost attained it one other time in the playoffs. Almost NLDS attained it. One, one walk, that was you it. Think it. One walk. Yeah, one walk. That Which shouldn't it. have been called. And, and you know what? In reality, that was the atmosphere that you wanted something like that to happen. This was still perfect, but that, was, that, that in reality was the atmosphere that you'd want something like this to happen. And stunningly... Achingly, he has taken from us at the age of 40 with his entire family life ahead of him. It is one of life's greatest tragedies. The death of Roy Halladay reminds us all of our inevitable mortality. As we try to cope with the loss of one of our sports heroes, we take solace in the perfect memory he left behind.